Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Damien Lemos here for thechessworld.com. Welcome to this new course where we'll be talking about the Scandinavian defense for black. So we'll do an intro, I'll mention the lines we'll study, and without further ado, let's dive in. We know the Scandinavian occurs after e4, and here black plays d5. What I like about the Scandinavian defense for black is the fact we liquidate white center right from the get-go. It is also true that we do get the queen out at an early stage in the game. That being said, if we are careful, then by playing d5 and queen takes d5, we already achieved a lot by getting rid of white center. So after pawn takes, queen takes d5. Here white has knight c3, that is the main line, and against knight c3 we'll work on queen d6, that's the line I like. There's also queen a5, which is playable of course, it's been the main line for many many <laughs> decades, I would say. There's also queen d8, which is sort of a new fashion. I don't really like queen d8 as much, because it's uh, too passive, in my opinion, so... Queen d6 is the line we'll focus on, it's been played by top grandmasters and I feel it gives us a lot of potential not only to equalize but to play for an advantage in the upcoming middle game. So that's uh, the main line. Now after e takes d5, queen takes d5, white has other possibilities as well, d4 is a move knight f3, so we'll take a look at those as well. Now before we do so, we have to analyze other lines such as knight c3. So knight to c3 is, uh, I would call this a subline. That being said, it's uh, playable for white. There's nothing wrong with knight c3, so we should uh, take a look at this line first. I usually, in my videos, in my courses, I like analyzing the sublines first, and then once we get rid of those, we move on to the main lines. So I feel that's also a good way to understand what's going on in an opening defense. So hopefully we can do that in this course as well. So after knight c3, uh, we'll start um, analyzing yeah, this this line. All right, so after knight c3, the line I like as black is d4. I like grabbing grabbing a lot of space. If when allowed, I, I like playing d4. We'll see. We could play e5, c5 as well. It's like king's Indian with reverse colors. I also have to say that. If you're a Karakan player, you can play c6, and you're actually actually transposing into a Karakan. If you're a French defense player, then you can play e6, and you're transposing into a French. So, d4 is uh, the line I like uh, for black, because uh, we get a lot of space, and we'll see. So, in the following lines, here white plays knight to e2. And now, like grabbing more and more space, playing e5. So here, white usually plays knight g3. It moves aside. Let me mention a few concepts here. What white's trying to do is, he's trying to play in a king's Indian fashion with reverse colors, but he also wants to... Um, get rid of that bishop on f1. What, what do I mean by that? Well, if he plays, let's say, instead of knight g3, let's say he goes d3, well, then he's gonna struggle to find a good diagonal for that bishop. He'll play something like knight g3, maybe he'll play something like f4 to attack on the king side. Problem is, that bishop on f1 is what we call a tall pawn. 
it is crashing into the pawn chain. It won't be easy for white to get his kingside pieces out. So it would be better for white to play something like bishop c4 or bishop b5 check before playing d3. The other thing is, you could argue that white can play g3 and bishop g2. That is true, but if he goes g3, then that knight on e2 doesn't have a square to go to. So it, it feels like white has some space issues here. So after knight g3, what white wants is to play something like bishop c4, then he'll play, I'll just play a random move to illustrate the point. Let's say I play a6, so here white plays bishop c4, he goes d3, and since the center is closed, he might be able to play something like f4 and start attacking on the king side. This is a king's Indian concept, actually. When the center is closed, white or black can afford to attack on the king side because um, there's no action going on in the center. Now, if we had a pawn on d5, c6, we won't see an f4 move by white because, of course, there's a lot of things going on in the center. Now that the center is closed, white has more possibilities to play something like d3 and f4 successfully. But in order to do so, he has to get that bishop out first. So, now that we mentioned those concepts, let's uh, see a few moves here. So let me refresh the move order again. e4, d5, knight c3, d4. Okay, knight to e2, e5. So here, knight g3 is the main move. If he plays, I've got d3 in my analysis as well. So, as we mentioned, d3 is not accurate. By white here, we can just grab more and more space on the queen side, other moves are possible as well, of course. Now, white uh, plays in g3, knight c6, bishop g2, bishop d6. So what we got here is um, a king's Indian with opposite colors. f4, here, there's a game we're following actually, which is uh, Jew against Makun. Um, uh, Black's player in this game is 2600, so <laughs> pretty strong player. Um, in this game, Black played f6. Interesting, because we'll just keep on getting our pieces out. And the other thing I really like about this uh, system for Black is that we don't really have to castle kingside yet. We could, but if we castle kingside, then White is more than happy to start firing a kingside attack. That's what black would do in a king's Indian. Now we're analyzing this this with opposite colors, so we should switch uh, that position in our heads. Now, in our minds, that's what I meant. Uh, so here we could castle, however, we can be flexible and play something like bishop e6 or bishop d7. We can even try something like castling queenside. So, this is a plan. Uh, what else can we do here other than f6? What I would do, taking into account my experience as a king's Indian player, I would play knight f6. Because if he takes on e5, this is a concept that happens all the time in structures like this one. We'll just establish a minor piece on e5. That bishop on g2 is not great. On top of that, we can play something like h5 and h4, and he's full of weaknesses. Not to mention the e3 square. Knight g4, knight e3. Even bishop g4 is a possibility. I think our space advantage here speaks for itself. Now, if he plays something like f5, well, we could just castle kingside. I know if we castle kingside, he'll start attacking there. That being said, I don't really believe in white's attack because 
is way behind in terms of development. I could just play something like bishop d7. You don't have to castle yet. I can just stay flexible as black and start start attacking on the queen side way before he gets his king side attack in. So I believe this is much much better for black. So this line for white when he plays an early d3 I think it's not precise. Again we'll see that it is a better try for white to get that bishop out first and then it'll be easier for him to start kingside operations. Alright, so after e5, let's see one more try by white, which is f4 right away. If he plays f4, I would just take. Knight takes f4, now we've got bishop d6. We could try queen h4, unfortunately for us he's got g3 and we have to move our queen back. Bishop d6, on the other hand, is a great move. We get the bishop out for free, winning a tempi, attacking white's knight. And now we get a structure we've seen before. He plays d3, he protects the pawn e4, he protects the knight on f4. However, that bishop on f1 is a tall pawn. We call a tall pawn a bishop that's crashing into the pawn structure, which is not as good as the other bishop in this case, bishop c1. So now, after d3, we also get the e5 square, which is a square we can use for posting a knight. So knight f6. Here, eventually, we'll have ideas with knight g4, knight e3. For the time being, I think it's fine to just castle to finish our development and then we'll continue uh, our middle game strategy. Here white plays bishop e2, we can just castle of course, and we'll, doing, we'll be doing great as black. We can even be, be more precise and play something like bishop g4. And I really like this move because we'll remove that knight from f3, we'll just take it and then we'll post our knight on e5. So let's say white castles, now we can simply take, bishop takes, can play knight e5, I think the engine likes bishop e5, I think knight e5 is easier to play. So here we get the center and the control, it won't be easy for white to attack anytime soon, I really like my knight on e5, We'll castle and then we can keep on expanding on the queen side. So I feel this is a great example of uh, why uh, White might struggle with uh, his light squares bishop in this line. So now that we saw some of the sub lines here, let's see what happens if he tries getting that bishop out via c4. Alright, so after knight g3. Here, a key move, bishop e6. I really like this approach by black because we actually stop bishop c4. Now, let me show you what happens if we play, let's say we play natural moves, for instance, c5. Okay, after c5, he can play something like knight to f3, we go knight to 6, we protect the pawn on e5. Now, on top of bishop c4, he can try bishop b5 as well, attacking the knight, attacking the pawn on e5. Um, so, here for instance, bishop b5, we need a tempi, I'll play bishop d6, okay. Now, he can just castle, I'll play, I don't know, knight e7, makes sense, connecting knights, he'll play d3, so here I'll castle. This is fine for black too, I'm not saying this is wrong. What I'm saying is, white is actually, we are accommodating him because we are playing with his, what he wants to play. He got the bishop out of the pawn chain, he'll probably swap that bishop off, maybe on c6, perhaps at some point if we, let's say he goes, 
I don't know, h3, just to, to make sure we don't play something like bishop g4. Maybe he'll try knight h2, maybe he'll try f4 one day. So let's say white plays a useful move. At some point, he might swap that bishop off. That's a good deal for white because now he'll basically get rid of that bishop. Let's also point out that bishop e6 is our best bishop, and bishop d6, on the other hand, is it's okay, but it would be our tall pawn in this position. It is crashing into c5, e5, d4. So, this is equal, in my opinion, but I feel this is what white wants to play. Center closed, his bishop is out of the pawn chain, It'll be easier for him to attack on the king side. Maybe one day he'll try knight h4, knight f5, knight g5. Maybe he'll play f4, f5. So this is not as easy for white to play if his bishop is inside the pawn chain. So my point is, why would we, why would we accommodate our opponent if we know he wants to play bishop c4 and then d3, f4, why accommodate him? I think, as chess players, it's a great idea to play against our opponent's strategy. So if we go bishop e6, it won't be easy for him to find a great diagonal for his bishop. And now if he goes something like bishop b5, then we can just play c6. Might still try and trade his uh, bishop, playing bishop a4, and here two interesting maneuvers as black. I think both are related <laughs> in a way. We, could, we can try knight e7 followed by knight c5, or we can try knight a6 followed by knight c5. I think both are equally good. Perhaps knight d7 looks more stable because if he goes knight f3, we don't have to worry about our pawn on e5. That being said, it's easy to protect that pawn with other pieces as well, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, after knight a6, let's say he goes bishop b3, he goes for the trade. For starters, we can play knight c5, and if he trades, then we end up with a powerful knight on e6. It won't be easy for him to play f4 anytime soon. Here I would even consider playing something like g6 to stop knight f5. And after g6 I can play h5 as well. We're basically playing against white's minor pieces. And I feel this is just fine for, for black. Now if he goes knight f5, thank you very much. If he trades our bishop off, he's doing us a favor. So... Knight f5 is actually welcome. If he doesn't, then let's say he goes d3. Now I can still get my pieces out. And I can also play the g6 h5 idea. See, we are playing against his pieces. And we are playing against his plans. He won't attack on the king side. He won't play f4. Now, that's not likely to happen. Let alone here when we've got a knight on e6. So... We are making the most out of our space advantage. Another concept I learned whilst analyzing this line is um, here. Okay, bishop b5, c6, bishop a4. Now we could play, yeah, knight a6 again. What we could play here after bishop b3 is uh, we could take. Knight c5 is the line we just saw. We could take. Now he won't take with c2 pawn. That doesn't look great at all. Now, if he takes with the side pawn, then we can play d3. And we are breaking his harmony on the queen side. If he takes, then we play queen takes d3. If he doesn't take, uh, he'll have a lot of issues later on. We can relocate our knight to e6. That pawn on d3 is great for black because it basically stops white from getting its pieces out. So... I think white has a lot of issues here from the positional point of view. So, 
after knight g3, bishop e6. Let's see what I got as the main line here, which is um, knight f3. Okay, there's another game you'll find in the PGN files where white played bishop b2. Uh, I don't think that's a, that's a good line at all, so let's see what happened in the main game, which is Gohemer against Van Belli. You'll find that on the PGN files as well. So after knight f3, black plays f6. Now we'll see, we, we build a nice pawn chain. We make sure we keep our space advantage stable. And I feel f6 is a must play move. We can play, we can play knight c6 and knight e7 as well. However, if we go knight c6, then he's got a reason to play bishop b5. Again, we've got resources there. I don't, I don't feel that's better for white per se. That being said, there's no need to allow that. Knight d7, it's interesting because we can always, uh, if he goes bishop b5, we can meet that with c6. So, knight d7, it is interesting. However, f6 is the best because, uh, as we mentioned, we keep a solid pawn chain and then we can play c5, knight c6, bishop d6, knight e7. We can find the perfect setup for our pieces whilst keeping our space advantage. So here white has a dilemma. He has to make a move on the king side. He has to show us his cards. What do I mean by that? Well, he has to move that bishop on f1, probably. If he doesn't, then he has to play d3. What else? If he goes d3, we know how great this is for black, because he won't be able to uh, play something like f4 anytime soon. He'll struggle to find good squares for that bishop. In fact, e2 is the only square. So d3 is uh, way too passive. And if he doesn't play d3, then what else? He has to look for other um, ideas such as c3. In other words, uh, after f6, white has to make a move. We'll soon know what the game is going to be like when we see white's move. So, here c3 and d3 are the main moves I see for white in this position. Now, if he goes bishop b5, again, we can just play c6 and knight a6. So, first let's see d3 uh, real quick. If he goes d3, now we can just keep on getting our pieces out. Here we've got a golden opportunity, and that is bishop b4 check. And here I'm talking about positional concepts. By playing bishop b4 check, he won't play c3, of course, because we win material, knight d2 is way too passive. If he goes bishop d2, then we can just take. Now, what we achieved by playing bishop b4, we swapped off our worst bishop. Imagine we play c5 now. We got a fantastic pawn structure. We are left with the powerful bishop on e6. That bishop is perfect. And white, on the other hand, is left with bishop f1, which is crashing into the pawn chain. We'll soon be able to play something like c4, we'll keep on getting our pieces out, and our space advantage is getting bigger and bigger. White doesn't have a lot of attack. On the king side, I, I don't see anything. Um, it's easy for us to stop any threats on the king side, and we might even end up attacking on the king side as well because we get we, everything under control there. White doesn't have breaks like f4. So remember this concept, because if he plays d3 and we've got something like bishop b4 check, then that's a golden opportunity. We basically trade his best bishop off. So now let's take a look at c3. All right, after c3, here, in the game, black plays c5, and we'll see we get a lot of uh, complex positions. 
after c5 where I think chances are balanced. That being said, as black I will strongly, strongly consider playing d3 here because uh, as white it won't be easy to get uh, pieces out. We've seen a line like this before. And it's not easy for white to attack the pawn on d3 either. What can white play here? We might even, if we're allowed, we might play c5 and c4, and then we'll make sure we keep that pawn on d3 forever. If he goes for something crazy like knight takes e5, I've checked this and nothing happens. Queen h5, I mean, he gets two pawns, fine. However, after bishop f7, the engine likes king d7, by the way, but let's keep it more human. Bishop f7, queen takes, now I can play. Queen e7 is interesting, then he takes, and at the end of that line, he gets another pawn back. However, knight e7, um, I, don't, I don't think white has enough compensation, if you ask me. Queen b5, here I can play knight e7 or knight c6. Both are fine. Now, he gets the pawn back, uh, but we do have an extra piece. Uh, I know white has some compensation, because he's got a few pawns for the piece, but in the long run, the extra piece should uh, give us uh, at least a slight advantage. If we play like an engine, we might be winning already. So, what I would... Uh, mention here before I finish this line is that um, we've got a lot of active moves like knight g6, knight e5, knight f4. I might play c5 here or later on. Yeah, here it looks just fine because I just want to make sure he doesn't get a powerful center by moving the queen away and playing d4. But here I think peace play is more relevant than uh, him moving the queen and playing d4 because uh, We've got an open position, I see knight jumps all over the place, I might even just play queen c7 and castle queenside, and my initiative plus my extra piece should uh, be decisive for black. So, this is a line, again I don't think knight takes e5 works, so after d3, um, the other line is... Uh, Maybe something like knight h4, again trying to do something on the king side. I don't think knight f5 is a threat because when he plays that I can always play g6. I don't think queen h5 is a threat because I can just play bishop f7, worst case scenario. And I can play c5 here. I, I can just keep on building my um, queen side uh, space advantage. And white, what is he gonna do? Queen h5, now bishop f7 is just fine. g6 is a bit sharp. Now, if he moves queen f3, then c4. And he's running out of space. And if he plays knight takes g6, it feels like he's winning because now if we take, he gets the rook on h8. However, bishop f7, and we just win. We win the piece on g6 and probably the game as well. So, let's see what line I've got written down here for white, because after knight g3, okay, bishop b6, knight f3, f6, c3, in my analysis, okay, I've got d3, so we saw knight h4, knight takes e5, those lines are not given white much. There's also queen a4 check, and I feel this is the move we are likely to get in our games because it is a check and is somehow getting closer to attack that pawn on d3. However, after c6, we stop queen b5. There's no queen b5 for white. There's no queen b4. Uh, there's no queen b3. So he doesn't have ways to attack our pawn on d3. And. Sorry, I made a mess out of these arrows. <laughs> Hopefully that's fixed now. After c6, now we'll continue with knight a6, knight c5, queen d7. I think we have a safe 
place our king on the queen side and then we'll start attacking on the king side as well. It is amazing what space can do for you, especially in this line. So d3 is the move I would play as black. I think it gives black the advantage. In the game, black played c5 and here after bishop b5 check we get an interesting position where I feel black is solid. That being said, white got what he wanted, which is getting the bishop out, playing d3. It is still a complex game with chances for both sides. So if you feel like playing a positional line like this one, that's fine. I would play d3 because I feel that's the most accurate way to punish white for playing this move order. So before we finish this chapter, let me show you one more line real quick where um, white tries something different. I think it's knight g3, bishop b6. Um, yeah, I recall mentioning there is bishop b2. There is a game you'll find in the PGN files where white plays bishop b2, um, black plays knight c6. I like it. We can play other moves as well. Here, thing is, if he played bishop b2 already, now he's not going to play bishop b5. And if he does, we can just play, we can just keep on getting our pieces out. I'm not concerned about him taking on c6, because we get the bishop pair, and we can always play c5 and c4. So, here he's just wasting a move. Now, if he plays d3, which is what white played in the game, here we can just play bishop b4 check and we get the trade we we want. We, we get rid of his best bishop and then we can just continue getting our pieces out. I would even, knight f6 is fine, I would even play knight e7. I always got f6 to keep on building my nice pawn chain and something that could happen well, we know that bishop on e2 is not great. Um, something that could happen at some point is if he goes f4, then we can just take. And now we get the e5 square for our knights. Again, we end up with a structure. We've seen this structure before where he has a bishop on e2, which is not great. It is crashing into the pawn chain and we are dominating on light squares. This is a dream position uh, for black. I'll just play uh, random moves to illustrate the point here. Whether he plays queen f2 or not, we'll, we'll end up playing knight e5 because we had knight g6, knight e5 anyways. Now we establish uh, a piece on e5, we blockade that pawn on e4, we might play f6 just for good measure, and then we attack on the queen side. So I showed this game because we get the concept of playing bishop b4 and trading bishops off. That's the reason why I wanted to mention this game before finishing this chapter. So a lot of concepts, a lot of things to digest. We'll finish this chapter here and of course we'll continue analyzing lines on the next video onwards. So I hope you found this useful, hope you could learn something. Of course I want to see you guys on the next one. Thank you.